Good morning, folks. We're coming to you late today because of a long stretch of a lot of discussions last night with some of my quiet friends in high places about the raising of an entire NASA team to the ground. None of them have ever seen anything from NASA be placed properly into such a low category of merit. Fallout isn't done there yet. Anyway, let's get started at spaceweathernews.com and we find the last day on our star was very quiet. Central brightness is an active region berth and top left, we are watching that large filament maintain itself as it turns in to face Earth behind the coronal hole. Folks, there has been a solar mystery ongoing for years. The conflicting data suggesting that both the magnetic fields of the solar chromosphere are strong and yet other data suggesting it is unmagnetized. The solar chromosphere is this region, not the high upper corona and not the visible photosphere below where you see the dark sunspots. This middle region has been a thorn in solar physics for a while, but today we've got a number of identifications that that's no longer the case, that it is indeed magnetized. There are three links in your list today for that, identifying the chromospheric and lower coronal magnetic fields, and an explanation for why they couldn't see them before. If you get into that reasoning there, ask yourself what that means for their ability to see magnetic fields throughout the cosmos. Hint, they're bad at it. Up next, folks, another nova is not behaving. I hope I'm not the only one astounded at the behavior of these nova reported in the papers the last year and a half. Another category jumper, another new phenomenon. And FYI, this burst was 10 to the 31 ergs, which is a nova only about as big as the September 2017 solar flares. Micro nova. Now, last but not least, folks, it's about darn time. Let me preface this by saying that the mainstream has tried to blame CO2 for the upper atmosphere changes we have blamed on Earth's magnetic excursion and our weakening magnetic field. Those would be the polar summer mesospheric echo changes, the unusual chorus waves, and the changes in the vertical wind forcing. Today, they're coming in and saying that the expected upper atmosphere change with that same CO2 is absent. It's almost entirely controlled by the sun and geomagnetic activities, and while this is a nice nod at solar forcing, it's a nice nod at the electrodynamics of the planet. The most important thing here is that if CO2 cannot be blamed for changes in the thermosphere temperatures, you cannot then blame them for the other upper atmosphere changes, which didn't make sense in the first place, and instead, you are forced to realize those are symptoms of the Earth disaster cycle beginning to unfold again now. We greatly appreciate your support. No wind maps today, but there's a lot to catch up on from last night and more to think about from today's two top stories on the Nova in the upper atmosphere. Subscribe and we'll do this all again tomorrow, right here but right now at 7 a.m. in the new Valley of the Sun. Eyes open. No fear. Be safe, everyone.